Nick Bontis speaks at a press conference in Vancouver on June 5, 2022. Former football president and current CONCACAF president Victor Montagliani appeared before the Canadian Heritage Standing Committee as part of its ongoing review of the labor dispute involving national teams and governing bodies. Daryl DYCK The Canadian press Nick Bontis publicly apologized to Christine Sinclair on Thursday in his first public comments since resigning as head of Canadian football last month. Speaking at a hearing of the Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage in Ottawa, Bontis took no time respond to Sinclair's statement the committee, describing an interaction with him as, I have never been so insulted. Sinclair, the leading international goalscorer in her football career, asked Bontis later on March 9, when she voiced concerns about compensation to the women's national team, what was Christine complaining about? Bontis, one of three witnesses to testify on Thursday, told the committee he did not remember Sinclair using the language to which he was referring, but did not dispute it. She felt that I was being disrespectful to her concerns. I feel bad for making him feel that way, Bontis said in his opening comments. I have since contacted Christine and her manager to personally apologize. I take responsibility for this. I regret. Sean Heffernan, Canada Soccer's chief financial officer, and President Victor Montagliani, who served before Bontis, also testified. Bontis and Montagliani, now president of CONCACAF, defended Canada Soccer's deal with Canadian soccer business, telling lawmakers the contract gave Canada Soccer more guaranteed income than it had previously received. Montagliani said that prior the CSB deal, there was absolutely no local media market for national team games, and Canada Soccer had spent its own money televised national team games rather than allocate those funds grassroots football. CSB sponsors and broadcasts Canada Soccer and finances the men-only Canadian Premier League for an annual payment of approximately $3 million to Canada Soccer. Members of both national teams feel the deal puts a ceiling on Canada Soccer's ability to capitalize on the success of its players. Canadian Football General Secretary Earl Cochran had stated earlier this month that national governing body was working to update deal with CSB, hoping to access increased revenue and renegotiate length of contract. As with the first two hearings, the questions covered more than one subject. MPs each had only a few minutes to get members of different political parties to speak, and many had questions on different topics. The politicians also referred to lack of transparency within the organization, as alleged by four members of women's team when they testified. CFO Heffernan said Canada Soccer has now reported incomplete financial statements to Corporations Canada. NDP committee member Peter Julian said football-paying Canadian families deserve to know how the organization spends funds. Sinclair said on March 9 that Canadian football's approach to finance reflects a culture of secrecy and obstructionism, Julian said. I think it's fair to say that this is an issue in terms of finances and the lack of responses we're getting today. Canada's women's side is ranked sixth in the world and is gearing up for the Women's World Cup this summer. No employment contract since the last one expired at the end of 2021. Players have agreed in principle with Canada Soccer on compensation for 2022, but they do not have an agreement that addresses their other concerns. The women said their participation in the April FIFA window, including a preparation in France, was dependent on significant progress the negotiations. The 53rd ranked men, who played in their first World Cup since 1986 late last year, are negotiating their first formal employment contracts. All three parties are discussing an overarching collective agreement that will ensure equal pay. Both teams have left field protest past 12 months, men's Vancouver June, women's Orlando February. Football hearings are part of the Heritage Committee's ongoing research on safe sport in Canada. Lawmakers surveyed Hockey Canada executives in 2022, and this led to changes in the organization's leadership, 